In this scene, we're going to focus on stenosis. And luckily, there's pretty much only one acquired cause of mitral stenosis that you need to know, and that's rheumatic fever, an acute multisystem inflammatory disease that sometimes follows a group A streptococcal infection. Remember group A strep from Sketchy Micro? Its other name is strep pyogenes, embodied, as always, by that deliciously flaky pyogenes pie. And, in case you haven't guessed already, it's a strawberry rhubarb pie. That's rhubarb for rheumatic fever. Now, group A strep can cause a vast array of infections. Cellulitis, glomerulonephritis, pneumonia, all kinds of stuff. See that red handkerchief tied around his neck, though? It's there to remind you of streptococcal pharyngitis specifically. That means strep throat. You have to have a preceding streptococcal pharyngeal infection before you can get rheumatic fever. It's not entirely clear why, but the strains of group A strep that are able to colonize and cause infection in the pharynx are pretty much the only strains that are also able to trigger acute rheumatic fever. In the U.S. and other developed countries, we test for strep a lot. We can even use a rapid strep test to swab the back of the throat and identify strep antigen in about 15 minutes. And you know how it is. Antibiotics are like candy over here. So strep is often treated appropriately. In the U.S., strep pharyngitis rarely progresses to rheumatic fever. It's a much different story in developing regions of the world, however, where the incidence of acute rheumatic fever is substantially higher. It's thought that this is largely due to environmental factors, such as household overcrowding, which favors increased transmission of group A strep. In fact, severe disease caused by this nasty bug affects over 33 million people worldwide. And rheumatic fever is the leading cause of cardiovascular death during the first five decades of life. Yep, this cupcake shop definitely caters to the younger crowd. Though it can occur at any age, most cases of rheumatic fever occur in children who are between 5 to 15 years old. The classic test question will start out with a 10-year-old boy with fever, chills, and rash, and, to top it all off, a sore throat. On exam, you notice a bright red tongue along with little exudates on his tonsils. That just might be strep throat, my friends. And if that sore throat isn't immediately treated with antibiotics, about one in every 100 kids will progress to rheumatic fever. But hold on a sec. See the chef marking the calendar for a delivery of cupcakes due a few weeks from now? Before the first signs of acute rheumatic fever appear, there's actually a latency period of about two to three weeks following that initial episode of pharyngitis. And then all of a sudden, you're dealing with arthritis and rash and myocarditis. It's bad. Here's the thing though. It's not like during that three weeks, the bacteria had time to swim around and invade your joints and heart and have a party. The bacteria actually don't even make it past the pharynx. Instead, it's your own immune system that's attacking you. Antigen presenting cells show the bacteria to T cells. T cells tell the B cells what's up. And all of a sudden, you've got enraged B cells sending out IgG and IgM antibodies against your own tissues. Just think of this immunoglobulin-evoking pair of tongs latching onto something like your heart instead of bacteria, 